In today's lecture, we will see the IEEE 802.11, the wireless fidelity, which is popularly known as Wi-Fi. As usual, let's start the session with the outcomes. In today's lecture, we have five outcomes. Let's see what are they. Upon the completion of this lecture, the learner will be able to. Outcome number one, we will know about IEEE 802.11 Wi-Fi. We will know about the access method of Wi-Fi. The third outcome, we will see Wi-Fi adapters practically. Outcome number four, we will understand the modes of Wi-Fi. And the final outcome is, we will know the different Wi-Fi protocols. Before we step into the topic, we will see an analogy. Let's assume he is John and she is Jenny and they are in a group. Now answer this question. In this group, if John and Jenny are talking to each other, will others hear this conversation? Think of this question and the answer is yes. Those who are in the coverage range of John and Jenny can hear the conversation because John and Jenny are not the only participants in the group. Though others are also in the coverage range of John and Jenny, others can hear the speech signals of John and Jenny but they normally ignore this conversation because these conversations are not intended to them. How this analogy is related to computer network? In computer network, we have wired network and we have wireless network. In a wired network, we can do unicasting so that the signals from the sender can be received by the receiver. When the signal is transmitted over wire, it is not giving room for others to know this conversation. But in wireless, in a coverage area, if a sender sends the data, whoever is in the coverage area of the sender, they can still hear the conversation. So in wireless, this is one of the major areas of security concern. Now let's dive into the topic. The topic of the session is IEEE 802.11. It is also known as wireless fidelity, which is known as Wi-Fi. And like its Ethernet and token ring siblings, these two are wired LAN technologies. IEEE 802.11 is designed for a use in a limited geographical area maybe in homes or in office buildings or in campuses. So IEEE 802.11 is a wireless LAN technology and the primary challenge is to mediate access to a shared communication medium. In this case, the signals propagating through space or air. That is what we have seen in the analogy. Always there is a security concern with wireless. And we know IEEE 802.11 Wi-Fi is mainly for wireless LAN. In addition to this, this 802.11 supports additional features. They are power management and the security mechanism. Now let's see an example. In this example, we have a router. This actual router is connected to the ISP that is the Internet Service Provider's office. And we get internet connectivity from this office to our campus network. Let's say this is our router which is placed in our campus. Now, with this router is connected to the wireless access point. Let's say this is the Wi-Fi access point where many devices can connect to this Wi-Fi access point. Not only laptops, we can also have mobile phones. Now what happens when this computer wants to connect to the local area network? So it gets connected to the wireless access point first. In turn, if it wants connectivity with its local area network, so it can participate through this Ethernet switch where there are many devices connected with this Ethernet switch. So from this place to this place, it's wireless and from this place to this place, it's a wired technology. So protocols will take care of these activities. Now in case if this client wants internet connectivity, let's assume there is a user who is working in this laptop who wants to access google.com. How we will get google.com connectivity? He opens a browser and the connectivity between these two is 802.11 that is Wi-Fi technology. So between this access point and router, it is a wired technology and it becomes the responsibility of this router to forward the packets to the ISP router and in turn we will get internet connectivity. Now this whole scenario can also be replaced with the help of a wireless router. In this case, we have a wireless access point and we have a router which works with wired environment only. If you observe, both the interfaces are wired interfaces only. We also have an access point which is connected to the Ethernet switch. So we can also replace this entire thing with a wireless router where this wireless router provides the functionality of a router but with the help of wireless technologies. 
Also, it can extend its capability by providing one of its interfaces to establish a local area network also. Let's see one more example. Say in this example we have a switch. This switch is providing connectivity to two wireless access points. Let's assume this is wireless access point 1 and this is wireless access point 2. And these two wireless access points are connected to this Ethernet switch. Now if you observe this is PoE switch that is power over Ethernet. It means these wireless access points need not have a separate power supply. The Ethernet cable which is connected between this switch and this wireless access point will also carry power. And this is what we call as power over Ethernet. And for example, if this device wants internet connectivity, how this device gets internet connectivity? It is connected to the wireless access point. This wireless access point in turn is connected to the switch and this switch is somehow connected with the router. Now this router forwards the data packets to the internet. So here we have a wireless LAN and here we have wired LAN because these devices are connected to the switch with the help of wires. Whereas these devices are connected to this network with the help of wireless. Let's now see more on IEEE 802.11. This 802.11 uses 5 GHz radio band. So it is a high frequency radio band which has 23 overlapping channels rather than 2.4 GHz frequency band which has only 3 non-overlapping channels. IEEE 802.11 uses 5 GHz radio frequencies even it can work at 2.4 GHz radio frequencies. If it uses 5 GHz radio band frequency, it has 23 overlapping channels. If it can use 2.4 GHz frequency band, it has 3 non-overlapping channels. So whatever the case is, we can use IEEE 802.11 that is this Wi-Fi technology for our wireless local area network. Let's recollect what's the access method used by Ethernet that is the wired LAN. Ethernet uses CSMA CD that is carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. As I already mentioned, in wireless we cannot detect collision because the signals are propagated through air. So in Wi-Fi, the access method of Wi-Fi is CSMA CA which is carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance. Please make a note of this point. Ethernet uses CSMA CD and Wi-Fi uses CSMA CA. Now let's see the Wi-Fi adapters. So we have Wi-Fi adapters which is very small in nature. In case if we don't have a Wi-Fi adapter to our desktop computer also, purchase this Wi-Fi adapter. Just plug this into your USB port of your computer. So we will get Wi-Fi connectivity. We have Wi-Fi adapter of this kind, we have Wi-Fi adapter of this kind and this is the antenna. So far we have dealt with Wi-Fi and we have also seen the access method of Wi-Fi. Now let's dive into the next topic which is the modes of Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, it works in two modes. Number one, it's the infrastructure mode. Let's see an example. Let's say this is the wireless access point and this is the client machine that is connected to this wireless access point. The client is sending the request for printout and the access point is giving that request to the printer. Now printer takes the printout. Now how this is done? It's not these two devices are communicating directly. This device is communicating with the access point and the access point is then forwarding the data to the right device or the destination. Now here if we have an access point and all the client machines are depending on the access point which is also called as a wireless access point. We also have an ad hoc mode. Ad hoc means we don't have any infrastructure. When we don't have any fixed infrastructure then it is called as an ad hoc mode. In other words, infrastructure mode has a centralized administration whereas ad hoc mode is decentralized. We will talk about this ad hoc mode and the infrastructure mode more in the next lecture. So Wi-Fi can work in infrastructure mode as well as in ad hoc mode. Before we conclude, we will see the different Wi-Fi protocols. Here is the protocol and we have a frequency, we have channel width and we have the maximum data rate. It's a theoretical data rate. Now let's start with the initial version which is the IEEE 802.11 which worked at the frequency of 2.4 GHz and the speed is up to 2 megabits per second. Now we have so many variations of Wi-Fi. IEEE 802.11b which uses 2.4 GHz and the speed is 11 megabits per second. IEEE 802.11a 
The frequency is 5 gigahertz, operates at the speed of 54 megabits per second. Then we have IEEE 802.11G, 11G and 11A differs in this term. That is, this uses 5 gigahertz and this uses 2.4 gigahertz, but the speed remains still the same. Then we have IEEE 802.11N, which can operate either in 2.4 mode or 5 gigahertz and its speed up to 450 megabits per second. Then IEEE 802.11 AC wave 1, the speed is 866.7 megabits per second. Then we have IEEE 802.11 AC wave 2, it speeds up to 1.73 gigabits per second. We also have IEEE 802.11 AX, which operates at the frequency of 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. And if you observe, the speed is 2.4 gigabits per second. And that's it guys. I hope now you know the basics of IEEE 802.11. We know the access method of Wi-Fi that is carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance. Simply CSMA CA. And we have seen the Wi-Fi adapters. We understood the modes of Wi-Fi that is infrastructure mode and ad hoc mode. And we also know the Wi-Fi protocols. I hope you guys enjoyed the session and thank you for watching.